and welcome boaters and fishermen. Today we're going to be doing the install of the Motor Guide XI5 trolling motor system. This is the 36 volt system, 72 inch shaft, and 105 pounds of thrust. This is going to be one of your bigger saltwater trolling motors. And if you ever have any doubt about the, the size and power that you need, always go bigger because you're going to be in different types of current situations and you might get into two to three foot seas and you're going to need a powerful motor to hold you there and some of these inlets that you come in and out of these river systems are very strong especially bridges and spillways but the old acronym boat bust out another thousand not in this case buddy for this setup here and all your trolling motor batteries and your onboard charger, you're looking at about $3,500. But they say it's well worth it because it's got the anchor lock feature and that can hold you onto your coordinates and fish. Uh, all you have to do is hit the anchor button. And I will say that with the Motor Guide XI5 that it has its own GPS on the trolling motor, unlike the Minn Kota. I'm not knocking Minn Kota or nothing like that, but it is easier when you don't have to install a separate GPS beacon. Let's get right into this install, guys. Stay tuned. Alright, guys, so I'm going to start off with the Motor Guide XI5 trolling motor. Uh, this is a saltwater edition. It has pinpoint GPS, 72 inch shaft and 105 pounds of thrust it runs on a 36 volt battery system but here's a few things that you're going to need for this trolling motor before you mount it you're going to need the motor guide quick release bracket now you don't have to have this but i recommend this so you can pull this pin right here and detach it from the boat you're also going to need the plug for the trolling motor you're also going to need the trolling motor power receptacle and it says here 12 volt 24 volt and 36 volt but also you see the receptacle you're gonna have to drill a hole for this so you're gonna need an inch and an eighth hole saw to drill into your fiberglass and you're gonna have to have a pilot bit inserted in here all right guys so before you begin you are gonna need some help it's going to take two people to hold this thing in place while you get your dimensions and line up everything the right way. Now, when your shaft flips off the trolling motor, you should have an inch and a half here. I'm going to go about two inches from here or two inches of clearance, whichever one needs to be. But that shaft has to have at least an inch and a half of clearance from touching anything. That way, uh, if you get into rough conditions, the shaft's going to move a little bit on you. Uh, also... This was a trolling motor bracket I got from Jet Technologies, and as you can see, these heads of these uh, bolts are up above about a quarter inch. So I'm going to have to take a piece of quarter inch starboard here. I'm going to have to drill and mount this on top to clear my bolts, and I'm just going to cut this to fit over this before I mount my trolling motor. Uh, the reason I didn't recess these heads is because I didn't want to take away any of the thickness of this bracket. Alright, so this is your quick release trolling motor bracket. This is going to mount to the bottom of your trolling motor. And this is going to mount to your boat, your deck, or your trolling motor bracket, which I have here. You're going to get four bolts. It's going to go on here. And this piece is going to simply just slide over it and you're going to insert your bar through here. Now, I can't do that yet because I have to put a piece of quarter inch starboard here to clear these bolt heads. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, but we got to get the trolling motor out of the box and fit this and make sure we get our inch and a half clearance here off here from the shaft. The shaft has to be clear from here to here not touching anything inch and a half clearance guys so we got this little package that comes with it it's got my prop in here it's got my hardware to mount the prop and it's got my pinpoint gps handheld remote and 
there you go there's a 72 inch shaft trolling motor this is a game changer guys you can hold your place on a snapper reef and fish or you can hit uh, bridges and inlets and just hold your spot and fish it's going to be great if you're fishing with a lot of people and you can actually enjoy fishing yourself in order to mount the trolling motor to the bracket the quick release bracket we're gonna have to take the side plates off and it is a pretty large screwdriver it looks like a number three maybe a number four I got a number two let's see if it works it works number two will work uh, they're not torqued really strong so there you go now we can put our quick release bracket onto the trolling motor here. Set these off to the side. Don't step on them because they are made out of plastic and they do seem a little bit fragile. All right, so we got both our plastic guards off of the trolling motor and we, now we need to mount this to the bottom of the trolling motor. Uh, this is what slides onto your puck here. So, your quick release bracket comes with mounting hardware and it is going to be the shorter ones here uh, and the way these are going to work is you're going to have a flat washer and a nylon nut on the bottom what you're going to do is you're just going to these are going to go toward the deck and you're going to put your flat washer and your bolt through here at we'll have to turn this around uh, yeah that's actually the right way because this is facing this way okay so you're gonna take your bolts here flat washers and you're just gonna mount it like so onto the trolling motor so we got one two three on each side so i'm gonna put my washers on here and i'm gonna put my nylon lock nuts on there and we're gonna cinch it down all right guys so we got our six bolts in the kit comes with an allen head allen wrench to go for the allen head and whichever side you want to put your retaining clip on that's where you're going to slide your your release handle so you have to put that on there and then drop your bolt through there and that's done all we have to do now is mount the puck and then we can mount the motor and guys, just a quick helpful hint. I'm gonna mark where my puck is with my Sharpie on the outside because when I lay this down, I'm not gonna be able to see where that puck is. And I'm gonna line these marks up wherever I'm gonna mount my trolling motor. So again, I'm gonna take my puck, go off to the side and I'm gonna mark where the puck is because once we flip this over you're not going to be able to see this puck all right so what we're going to do now we're going to put the retainer through it we're going to clip it in so it, the puck don't fall out and then we're going to set this onto our trolling motor bracket you're going to need two people to do this so get you some help make sure you don't drop it because it's about twenty four hundred dollars now all right guys so what we got to do is measure an inch and a half clearance from our bracket here which would be here now we can come back a little bit more but you want to make sure that your shaft is free here and free off your bracket i'm out about two and a half inches so i need to go in i'm gonna go in about a half uh i guess i'm gonna go with the factory recommendation and go an inch and a half so i need to bring this shaft here to an inch and a half clearance and i gotta check here and make sure it's clear here if it's clear there we'll be good all right hold it right there up to our bracket all right we're at about two inches now i'm gonna bring back just a little bit more all right I'll stop right there and that's about an inch and seven eighths go just a little bit more all right 
so there we go inch and three quarters that's good and we're good here off the bow so I'm gonna go ahead and screw my puck down I can actually see it here but we're gonna have to go to the front of this and center it up also and this is where my puck is I put my marks there so I'm gonna mark my bracket where the puck is and long as I'm anywhere close to that, you know, I got an inch and seven eighths here clearance. That's gonna that's gonna mount just fine. All right, at this time I'm gonna get me a drill bit to match the size of my bolt, and I'm gonna go up here to my puck. And my puck is right in those lines I made right here. That's why I told y'all put your lines on there and keep your puck inside those lines. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm centered up here and I'm just gonna drill holes here, 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 and here, my four holes. And that's what my trolling motor is gonna mount to. guys so this is my quarter inch starboard I needed to get that gap filled between the space of these bolts to clear my puck and my mounting bracket and I'm just gonna put some 5200 RTV on here put it down first uh, that isn't the greatest job but that stuff's pretty awesome so I'm just gonna put it down first you know, like I said, that right there gives me clearance above these bolt heads. And now I'm going to take my puck and make sure you put this on the right way. These, uh, these holes here at the top should be facing up because that's where your flat washer and your bolt head goes. So we're going to add some silicone marine RTV here. Just want a good seal and uh, we're gonna line it up with our holes and then we're gonna put our bolts through there and before we push it real tight with our bolts we're just gonna line it up snug it up and we should be good to go all right guys so we got our bolts through our puck here going through my quarter inch starboard which really came out nice as far as clearing those bolt heads got my 5200 in there uh, it's gonna be tight sealed up nice and snug and all we have to do now is lift your motor slide it down onto the puck put my retaining pin through here and clip it and that's it all I have to do now is reinstall my plastic covers and this thing's ready to be wired up and that'll be part two of the trolling motor installation video. All right guys, so we got it mounted on here. Now we have to function check it. And for some reason, this little piece of plastic up here is loose. I'm, ho I'm hoping that when I put those uh, pieces of side plastic on there that it holds it down those two pieces that we took off in the beginning of the video i'm about to put those back on but let's check it out see if it works uh we got our little lock here you just let it down and uh oh that locked awesomeness and so we're just gonna lock it right there so i'm really glad we got the 72 inch shaft you have to excuse my dog she's trying to chill in the shade which I don't blame her it's like 100 degrees today so we got a 72 inch shaft and I thought I was gonna be over length but you want this to be at least under the bow by about 12 inches I'd say and I got plenty up there so when I'm on on a spot on a reef and I'm trying to hold it I'm gonna be getting hit by waves so I'm probably gonna be getting picked up 
you know, two, three feet as much as I can handle for today. And you're gonna need that extra shaft length. So always go bigger if you're uh, in any doubt about what size trolling motor to get. So let's uh, put the side braces back on and check it out. There's a couple of things that I wanted to note to you that no one told me that I had to read the manual for. Uh, before you insert the sides back onto the trolling motor, this piece here is supposed to come off, but do not tear the ribbon. There's a ribbon here. Do not tear that off. That's for your LED screen. But I wanted to tell everyone that this NEMA cable that goes to your link for your uh, Simrad or your Lowrance, you can store this inside of this box. So you don't have to worry about it getting corroded by salt water. You can just take it and stick it right under the box. And you're just gonna take it out of the little channel that it's in. We're just gonna curl it around and sit it down in there. And then we can put our sides back on, our plastic side pieces back on. So we're just gonna take this and set it right back down on here. Make sure everything fits good. And then we're gonna put our side pieces back on. All right, so when we wanna put our propeller on, we're gonna take our, our pin Put it through the shaft. We're gonna take our propeller. It's got a shaft slot. Put it down to the shaft slot here. Our anode washer and our flat washer are gonna go on top of the propeller. And then we're gonna take our lock nut, nylon lock nut, and put it on. And then we're just gonna get our ratchet and socket and tighten it down, and that's it. All right, guys, another thing that I want to note to you is that when you install your trolling motor, I installed mine in a way that would give me more deck space to fish with, so I have my shaft running almost down the gunnel. And you got to be careful when you do that because if you do it wrong, you could uh, risk the the top of the unit hitting the gunnel okay so we don't want to do that so when you install this you want to make sure that you're not hitting the gunnel and if you end up in a situation like this where see my gps is like actually on the gunnel you can't ride like that, okay? If you beat and ping that thing against the gunnel, it's gonna damage it, so. You'll see two ways you can stow this thing, okay? If you pull it back, you see you have a, a hole here or a little cutout in the steel for the, for the bottom of the trolling motor to go in, which we're not gonna do that, okay? Don't be deceived by that, okay? You want to turn it sideways and these two paws right here fold down and what you're actually going to do is turn this push it up on there and it's going to grab into these paws and now the head of my trolling motor is perfect if it shakes it's not going to beat against the gunnel up there and this is a 72 inch shaft and this is very long so that's perfect. You, you know, you can't get much better than that. And on my boat, the gunnels kind of, they go up. So that's one thing to think about. A lot of boats don't have that. Mine does because it's kind of got a low profile in the front for fishing and then it kind of rolls up. But that's it. That's, uh, that's good. You want it to be just like that. And also, <clears throat> when I installed this motor, 
I marked where my puck was gonna be whenever I had someone holding it and sitting it down so when I unstowed my trolling motor that I would have an inch and a half clearance here and everything was clear so when you put this thing down you're not gonna be able to see that puck that the quick release mount goes to so make your lines make your lines there and it'll it'll save you a ton of hassle all right guys and the last and final thing that i absolutely love about the motor guide xi5 is that if you uh have been debating which trolling motor to get which you know i was i was thinking about the uh Minn Kota or the xi5 okay the gps unit on the motor guide is on the trolling motor you don't have to have an extra gps receiver that you have to mount somewhere else on the boat the motor guide has it on the trolling motor and that is awesome you don't have to worry about running another cable somewhere to another gps uh, receiver so that's really cool and the pinpoint accuracy on the motor guide is supposed to hold you tighter than the Minn Kota. so it's just something to think about guys uh, i know some of you have the Minn Kota, some of you have the motor guide but you know the motor guide has its own gps you don't you don't have to have an external receiver or, or run a wire somewhere else for it so that was really cool about it oh my gosh guys this is a complete game changer check this out nice speed it up slow it down these fish don't know what's coming to them now <laughs> 